What's up guys? This is Alton, uh, administrator of Black Business Owners of Atlanta. I think this is the first video that I put to this group, but anyway, uh, kind of want to just dive right into a topic that I've been hearing about. And I've been hearing about this all my life, and I know uh, within the group, a lot of us have been posting about how much the black dollar circulates in the black community. So I want to take some time and I want to touch on that subject. And I just want to put out some information. And I'm not here to try to offend anyone. I'm not here to try to come off as an Uncle Tom or a coon. I'm just trying to give my two cents. So maybe, hopefully, as black business owners and as black people in general, we can combat some of the issues, some of the money issues that we have in our communities and, and hopefully we can come to some type of solution by having dialogue and really talking about these things openly with an open mind and not really trying to blame it on someone else or another class of people. So what I want to do is that I want to touch on the things that I think in the black community that we need to do better when it comes to how well our money circulates. Now, I know a lot of people like to compare like the Jewish people, Indian people, Chinese people, people who come from different countries and they come to America and they make a certain amount of money or they open up a business and their money kind of stays or recirculates in their neighborhoods before it actually leaves their neighborhood. And when it comes to the black community, it just seems like that our money, we get our money and we take it from the neighborhood back out into other neighborhoods before we even support our own. And the biggest, I would say the biggest contribution to black people not keeping their money into the neighborhood, one of the biggest issues is, is that unlike these other people, okay, these other foreigners or whoever, black people, we spend a lot of money on bull crap. I mean, just plain and simple. And I'm not just saying, you know, you guys, I'm, I'm even talking about myself. There's even some times where I'll buy something and, and I'll just look at it after I bought it. And I'm just like, did I really had have to spend that much money? on this thing that, that I just bought? Did I really have to spend that much money, you know, going out and trying to enjoy myself? Where when you look at people who are like, you know, Jewish people or Indian people or Asian people, like they don't go out and spend their money on a bunch of crap that they kind of don't need. For instance, uh, I used to live in South Florida. I was born and raised in South Florida and I was raised around a lot of Jews. I know a lot of people like to say that Jews are cheap and all of that stuff. But let me tell you like this. Um, I've done work for Jewish people. You know, um, kind of started my handyman business and stuff down in South Florida. And I kind of brought it up here to Georgia. But when I did do work for people uh, who were Jewish down in South Florida, one thing that I noticed about Jewish people is that Jewish people spend money. Okay, do not get that twisted. <laughs> the thing about Jewish people is that they spend their money on number one things that they think that if it's a good product or if it's a good quality or if it's a good service, they have no problem spending their money on it. If they're going to buy a car, you better believe that's going to be one of the best running cars that money can buy within their budget. Okay, it's not going to be, you know, they're not going to go out and buy a Mercedes Benz worth $50,000 and they're only bringing in a hundred grand a year. That's, that's not the way Jewish people operate. A Jewish person can be making a half a million dollars and they will ride around in an old jalopy just because, you know, they, they just like this car is getting me from point A to point B. That's all I need it for. I'm not trying to impress anyone. And, and that's just it. That, that's just how Jewish people are. Now, when they spend money, they spend money. When they're going to throw their bar mitzvahs and, and when they're going to go out and, and have parties or dinners or do something really social or memorable like a wedding or something, they spend big money. Okay. 
they need something fixed. I've never had a problem with a Jewish person paying for my services when they needed something fixed. When I did heating and air, and I would say, hey, listen, um, I think you guys need a new system. And Jewish people would be like, how much? Some of them didn't even ask. They just said, go ahead and order it. Go ahead and order it and put it in. And I'm just like, do you even want to know the price? And they're just like, well, I need it. You know, I trust you. I've been working with you. I need it. Go ahead and get it. I know that you're not going to try to rip me off. And that's one of the, that, that's one of the big differences with the Jewish community. You know, Jewish people, they'll go and they'll shop at thrift stores. Um, I mean, I mean, you can find some pretty good stuff at thrift stores. I mean, I even shop at thrift stores. I find chap shirts and polo and Ralph Lauren and Lacoste and all of the stuff at thrift stores, you know, for pennies on a dollar, man. I mean, you know, you buy a $5 Lacoste shirt. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, as I digress, but Jewish people, they shop like that. If they're going to go to a restaurant, it's going to be at a restaurant that serves the food that they like to eat. And they only invest their money into things that they like. Things that they know that, that are beneficial to them. They're not going out for show or anything like that. And the thing about a Jewish person, if they like something, they're going to stick with it. Okay, if a Jewish person likes a restaurant, they'll stick with it. They're going to continue to eat there. If they like a certain brand of car, if they like, you know, Cadillac, they're going to stick with Cadillac. If it's a reliable vehicle, they're, they're going to stick with it. If, they, if it's a certain brand of clothes that they like, they're going to stick with it. But see, here's the problem in the black community. Um, a lot of times we like to let other people outside of our communities dictate what we should and what we shouldn't like. Like, for instance, I see a lot of women now, they are kind of like into the Michael Kors bags and all of that stuff. And... I remember when I first came up here back in 2006, a lot of women were into the, you know, coach bags. You know, coach was like the big thing, you know, we're talking about 10 years ago. And, you know, and I mean, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of women are still into it, but it's, it's bigger now with the Michael Kors. Michael Kors is like pretty big, and I see a lot of women with that. But the thing is, is that when I, when I see a woman with that type of bag, I'm just like, do you, do you really need that? Do you really need a bag on your arm that costs a, a few hundred bucks? Like, you know, couldn't you have gone, you know, and got a bag that was like, you know, way cheaper than that? Like, did you really, do you really have to walk around with a $300 bag on your arm every day? I mean, even going to work, you know, and what does that prove? You know, wearing expensive shoes, guys go out and you know, um, I hear about guys, even my age, I'm in my mid thirties and, and you know, there's some guys out there who are just so wrapped up on buying the latest Jordan shoe, you know, 250 bucks to, to put some sneakers on your, on your feet. Uh, you know, I even there was a guy, he was showing me a picture of some jeans. I can't remember the name of them, but these things were like 800 bucks. And I was just like, why would I want to put some jeans on that cost 800 bucks? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's not going to help me make my money back. You know, it's not an investment. It's just more like a liability. It's a waste of money. But the thing is, is that when black people get money, the first thing that we want to do is that we want to look important. And the thing is, I used to be there. You know, I used to want to look important. I used to want to, you know, I used to want people to notice me when I was out. I used to buy certain brands of shoes, clothing, you know, all of that stuff. But now that I'm older and I have a business, you know, I try to be more responsible with my money. And as black people, we have to learn how to take our money and invest it in the things that are going to benefit us. You know, things that are going to be cost effective and things that are going to help us. You know, if, you, if you're thinking that just because someone is black and they should just, you know, support your business just because they're black, that that's not going to cut it. You know, that's, that's not going to cut it. Um, and, and if you are a black business owner, you know, first of all, no one can take that away from you. If you're black and you own a business, you're a black business owner, whether your, your product is only made to cater to black people or everyone can use your product or service like me. 
you know, like with my handyman business, I mean, you know, I don't just serve the black community. You know, I serve anyone who needs my service. You know, I'm a black man with a business. I'm a black business owner. And a lot of people like my services, both black and white. But if your mindset is just focusing on, you know, us as a people, you know, we just need to support each other. And I mean, I'm, ain't nothing wrong with that. Trust me, there's nothing wrong with that because there are some things that we have or, or things that we need. Like, for instance, I ran into a young lady and, you know, I had a phone call with her because we had a dispute in the group and talked to her on the phone. And, you know, she has a great idea for a business that has to only cater to black people when it comes to, like, you know, our skin treatments and all of that because we have a different type of skin and she makes very natural products for hair skin you know wellness and all of that because you know we don't have too many people who have businesses to cater to that and i think that's a great idea and in that case you know that i mean you, you really can't help but to cater to black people when it comes to things like that because I mean you know white people don't have the same hair texture or skin color that we have so the things that they use are going to be different from the things that we use in terms of skin care and health and all of that stuff but anyway if you think that just because your business is run or owned by someone black and that that's the reason why black people should support it is really not going to do you much justice because I get people who hit me up all the time and they'll say well hey you know support my business you know because I'm black and you black um, that's no that's that's no good reason to support a business you know I've supported people's businesses who were black just because they were black and to be honest their services or their products sucked uh, it just sucked uh, you know I've going into some of these black owned restaurants and I'm just like, dude, I could have made, I could have made this dish way better than that. You know, with just the stuff that I got inside of my own kitchen and you guys kind of jacked the price up. So, um, so it's just stuff like that. But when you do have a business, it has to be unique. You have to make sure that your price is competitive. And that's what, that's what really drives a lot of business to your business or a lot of customers to your business is the price. If your prices are competitive, then people would seek out your service. Now, if your prices are kind of high, but there has to be a reason behind why your why your prices are pretty high. You know, like for instance, if you're using like all organic products, you know, rare products, then of course, yeah, you know, then you can basically use that as a selling point. But the whole point of this video is that if you're watching this, black people, buy the things that you need, okay? When it comes to money circulating in a black neighborhood, buy the things that are a necessity, okay? You don't have to go out, as soon as you get paid, you don't have to go out and go run in the Lenox Mall and start putting your money into Macy's and, you know, Burlington and uh, Bloomingdale's or, or Dillard's and all of that stuff. You know, you don't have to go out there and try to buy some Michael Kors bag. You know, find someone local who can sell a pretty decent, a decent bag, you know, for you to go buy. Um, you know, if you're going to go buy some shoes, you know, try to buy some shoes that's decent, you know, good quality, good brand from someone local. You know, you don't have to take your money and go all the way out to Midtown to go buy the latest pair of Jordans. You know, you may have a guy who who may have uh, who may be selling those Jordans wholesale, the real ones. I ain't talking about the fake ones. <laughs> But you may know someone who's selling that stuff wholesale. You know, you may there may be someone in the neighborhood who can get who, who has a legitimate business who can get you deals on great clothing, you know, stuff like that. There are good places, good places that serve good food, you know, at, at good prices. But that's basically the end of this video. I know I've been going on about 15 minutes now. And, you know, maybe 
you guys are probably going to watch half of this video, but sorry for the long rant. But I just want you guys to think about that. You know, we have to reform our minds. We got to get out of this this mindset of, of being of being slaves to the system and the market and the and, uh, uh, economic system that we have to buy something or we have to have something.